Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time we are going to mess with a deck that I haven't messed with in a little over a year, I think, honestly. I think the last time I messed with any form of combos for this deck, we still had Gumblar Dragon Legal, uh, which that went away at the beginning of 2019. Thank God that card was an unnecessarily broken mess of, you know, a thing to exist on the metagame. But so what we're going to be playing today and what I'm going to be showing you is a couple of Mermel combos for Master Rule 5 or Master Rule 2020 revision, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. That level of semantics is beneath me. But basically, Diva has gone to 3, which means that the deck gets a huge boost. And even not factoring in the cards that are coming out in Eternity Code for the Deep Sea archetype, this deck still has some combos that are viable literally this moment in time for the April 1st, 2020 Forbidden Limited list that... Make the deck something you might want to consider, something that is definitely possible for play on like the rogue spectrum of play. Uh, it's a shame that we don't have any events because Mermel was one of those decks that I wanted to play the most under Master Rule 5, uh, but tis a shame, truly. Uh, all the events being cancelled and whatnot makes it really hard for me to uh, play this anywhere because can't play it anywhere because there are no events to play it at. But anyway, what I'm going to be showing you today is two different variations on Teus Dragoon's combos. There are multiple different variations of how you could open these combos as well. You could open like Diva Teus and a Water, Neptibus, Teus, Water, uh, a bunch of different opening variations. I'm going to be showing you two main combo sequencings though that are very different from one another. The first one I'm going to show you is just a pretty simplistic take five cards out of your opponent's hand combo, leaving them to play with one card. Uh, it's very simple, uh, and it's not what I would consider the most optimal play for competitive play because it's kind of riddled with a few problems, at least until we get the Deep Sea archetype, because then like when we get the Deep Sea support and Eternity Code, then you can more consistently pick away at your opponent's hand. But the combo I'm going to be showing you second is the one that I personally think is the most competitively viable combo. It takes less cards out of your opponent's hand, but it ends on a better, more interactive board and also does some things in the combo sequence that make it better in the landscape of the metagame anyway. But so, I'm going to be showing you two combo variations like I said. Before I show you those, if you are new here and are new to the channel and want to see more content, definitely hit the subscribe button and enable that little bell notification button so you don't miss uploads. If you want to see more stuff that I'm doing, that's the best way to do so. And it also, if you want to catch my live streams, which I do multiple times a week, link is down below to my Twitch page. If you want to go there, follow the live stream and not miss a live stream next time I go live, where I play various decks. I've been spending a lot of time playing Mermails recently, then definitely go do that. As well as there's a link down below to my Discord server if you want to use that as a resource as well to chat with other people about Yu-Gi-Oh! and various other things. But anyway, with that out of the way... Let me show you what this does. So Teus Dragoons, the first instance I'm going to show you is, like I said, it's a more simplified version of the combo. Uh, it takes five cards out of your opponent's hand and leaves them with one card left to play with. Uh, now, you don't really have that big of an ending board, but you do have a good board presence, so it is something that is, you know, still fine by itself to have done. But so you're going to Teus discard Dragoons, Teus is going to add Mermel Abyss Gunned, and the Dragoons is going to add Deep Sea Diva. Now you're going to normal summon the Diva. You're going to use Diva's effect for Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince. And then Neptibus is going to send Dragoons and add another Dragoons. Uh, so you run through all your Dragoons in this combo sequence. But Pot of Avarice is legal. And we're definitely playing that card in this deck. At least I think that I'm playing this card in, that, in this deck. Uh, so there's that. But so what we're going to be doing from here is the uh, Dragoons we sent off Neptibus will trigger, which will add Abyss Megalo to our hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to get to five Waters in Grave while also triggering this other Megalo and setting ourselves up to step up into the different things we want to do. So what we're going to do is we are going to make Crystron Halka Fibrax, formerly known as Needle Fiber, using Mermel Abyssteus and Deep Sea Diva. We want to leave the Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince, on the board because we want to use that later for a specific play. But so... Halka Fibrax has summoned, using its effect on summon, we are going to summon Jet Synchron from our deck. Now you will have noticed there's a Fishborg Launcher in my deck, that one is used for the other combo. It's a bit more niche, but like, eh. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can say, eh. You'll see why it differs when I get there, effectively. But so, for this combo, we're going to go into Jet Synchron simply because it is the least restrictive card. 
that we have access to because Glow Bulb is banned. If we had Glow Bulb, we'd definitely be summoning Bulb here because Glow Bulb is Jet Synchron without having to send a card from your hand to the graveyard. But so, summon Jet Synchron. And the main thing we did was we put Teus in Grave, meaning that our gun now has something to revive. So we're getting full value. So we have four Waters in Grave. We're going to be discarding two off this Megalo, one's being Dragoons, one's being uh, Gunned. Gunned will revive uh, Teus, meaning that we'll have five Waters in Grave after this resolves meaning that we will be adding Mulan Glacia off of that Goons that is being triggered. But so, Megalo's Effect will add an Abyss card. You could add Abyss Sphere. Uh, I personally play the equip spell, uh, Mikazuchi, simply because it negates Dark Ruler no more, negates Super Polymerization, if those are things that would have to be uh, things to be factored against. It gives the biggest and most relevant like stat boost for when you're killing your opponent going second. And also, um, like... Uh, Abyss Sphere just doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it's it's not really anything impactful. At least I don't think so. But so what we're going to do here is we're going to add Mulan Glace off of this Dragoons, which is what we're searching with right now. And so we're going to start taking the cards out of our opponent's hand one by one. So we have five Waters in Grave at this point, specifically. And so we're going to special summon the Mulan Glace here and use Mulan Glace's effect, hitting two cards out of the opponent's hand. Now we're going to be able to start stepping up into different Synchros. So first one we're going to make is Cyframe Lord Omega using the Jet Synchron and the Abyssteus that we revived, and we're going to go ahead and use Omega's effect, just taking a card out of the opponent's hand. Now, what's interesting about this combo is that if you're playing against Orcus variants or Salomon Great variants, or even like Shadals, and like you hit a Windy out of their hand, or a Skolmata that sends Windy from deck to grave off of the Mulan Glace, like sort of accidentally, that Windy, or like say Falco, or just something that puts something on the board, right? Uh, will summon like a beast from deck face down off Windy or Falco will summon itself just trying to get value back off of the discard. We're going to make Trishula here, meaning we can take those problematic cards out of the graveyard like Orcus Nightmare or Salomon Great cards that we might have hit with Mulan Glace, putting them in graveyard to be resources. But then we can also hit a card off the board with Trishula, which is actually what's interesting about this combo. Now, what you need to do is you need to discard a card out of your hand for the Jet Synchron. Uh, well, not discard, it doesn't trigger Gunned or Dangers, it specifically sends a card to the graveyard, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. You can discard any card in your hand, because this is a two-card combo, but because we're not ending on any Mermails in this combo, you could also just discard the Mikazuchi, and then that also means the combo is completely self-contained. You don't have to factor other cards into it, so you could use your other three cards in hand as purely extenders for different aspects of your ending board, or whatever, right? You could just throw away the Abyss card that you added off of um, off of Megalo. But so from here, we've got Neptibus, which is a one, which is why we kept it around, plus a level one tuner, plus a level seven non-tuner. So we get to go into Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, which gets to take another card out of the opponent's hand, and you get to banish a card from the field if anything worked its way to field, like off of a Windy Resolving, off Mulan Glacia's discard, or if there's a problematic card in the graveyard, like Orcus Nightmare, Orcus Skeleton, a Salomon Great card, whatever, then you're able to get rid of that as well with the Trishula. So at this point, we've taken four cards away from our opponent, two off Mulan Glace, and uh, one off Omega, and then one off of Trishula. So four total. So what we're able to do here is that basically this is the entire ending board. It's nothing spectacular, but we do have a floating Omega, meaning that our board is pretty strong. We got 27, 28, and 28 with Omega. Uh, we have three other cards in hand, meaning that that could be any way to facilitate any plays on the following turn as well. But the main gist of this is that you left Halka Fibrax up, so what you're able to do on your opponent's turn, after they've played or set their first card, you're able to use Christian Halka Fibrax to go into Desert Locust from your extra deck as a Synchro Tuner. That's effect is the turn player discards a card. The opponent is a turn player when you use Halka Fibrax's effect, so they discard another card, meaning... This discards the fifth card out of their hand, meaning that they've been take they've been told to play with one card, right? It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. It's a very simplistic combo, but it has its strong points. And if this is what you want to build your deck around doing, then it's completely fine to do so. Uh, it's a very simple like you just take five cards away from the opponent. If any of your other cards in hand are cards that could generate like a negate, like aqua spirits or something to make a bahamut shark into toad then that's beneficial uh like it just allows you to negate the one card they have that's a lot of there's a lot of things you could use to build upon this especially since the ending state of this board leaves a lot of spots open 
uh, you leave a lot of open zones on this board which could be used into other stuff like if you had anything to make a rank four with you could make Bahamut into Toad, and that just negates the last card in their hand. Uh, there's a lot of different things you could do, you could have access to. But, so, that's this combo. It's pretty simple, at least I would say so. Uh, it sequences into itself rather efficiently and rather well, and like I said, you could open Diva Teus, uh, Neptibus Teus Water, and do the same combo. Um, what I'm going to be showing you is another version of Teus Dragoons, and it's the version that I personally prefer to perform because I believe it to be the most competitively viable and the most competitively stable version of the combo. Um, it just has a lot more things that it does correctly in a better way, and basically it becomes a little bit more niche in terms of the cards you have to play in your deck, but the ending board, I think, benefits greatly from it, and instead of just talking about it, why don't I just show you? All right, so here's the second version of Teus Dragoons, and like I said, I believe this combo to be more competitively stable and competitively viable. Just because it's going to do things like playing around Nibiru um, and ending on a better, more interactive board. While only taking three cards out of the opponent's hand, it is going to end on a much better board for playing against whatever your opponent could be playing. It's better positioned, right? But so, Teus, discard Dragoons. The Dragoons is going to trigger and the Teus is going to trigger. Off the Teus, we're going to add Mermel Abyss Pike. So, this version of the combo requires you to play certain more niched inclusions into your deck like Abyss Pike. But I think Pike is pretty good. I actually probably want to play like two of this. Simply because it's a really good normal summon. Uh, depending on how your hands are structured. But so, you're going to normal summon the Pike. And you're going to use Pike's effect. Discarding the Neptibus we added off Dragoons. To add Mermel Abyss Gun from our deck to our hand. Now the Neptibus got discarded. It's going to trigger. It's going to special summon Dragoons from our graveyard. And now we have two level 4 waters on the board. So we're going to overlay both of those into Bahamut Shark. Now from here, Bahamut Shark is going to activate its effect, detaching Dragoons, summoning Totally Awesome. And you'll notice that this is the fifth summon we've performed in the turn, is this Toad, right here. So this Toad, meaning, this Toad is the fifth summon, meaning this is the first point our opponent can Nibiru us for the rest of the turn, and there's a Totally Awesome on the board preventing them from Nibiruing us. So that's pretty nice. And it doesn't alter our water counts at all if we do negate something with Toad by sending it. Because if we send Toad to negate a card, it just adds a water monster from our graveyard back to our hand. So it puts itself in the graveyard as plus one water, and then it adds a water from our graveyard to our hand to go minus one water in grave. So it evens out to exactly the same number of water monsters in grave. So it never messes up our Mulan Glacia numbers uh, to negate with uh, Toad, just so you know. But so off of this Dragoons, we're going to add Mulan Glacia here, rather early you might think. But we have two waters engraved, the Neptibus and the Dragoons, and we have these that we're going to link away into a water, and there's a water under Bahamut Shark. So, that actually means that we're going straight up to five waters. So, we're going to link those into Marinces Coral Anemone, and then we are going to special summon the Mulan Glacia, because we have five waters engraved. Taking two cards out of our opponent's hand up with the Mulan Glacia effect, and now we can proceed further. And again, this Toad could negate anything uh, that was like a problem if you want it to, but otherwise it's just gonna chill here. He's just gonna be a toad. He's just gonna do what toads do and just chill, right? But so you're gonna use Marinces Coral Anemone's effect and we're going to revive Neptibus the Atlantean Prince to her arrow. Now we're locked into water monsters for the entire rest of this turn. So we can't make Cypher and Lord Omega as much as I would like to, and we can't summon Jet Synchron from our deck off of Needle Fiber, excuse me, Halka Fibrax, like we did previously, which is why Fishborn Launcher was in the deck because that is the best level one water tuner legal in the game right now <laughs> so it's a bit unfortunate but so neptibus effect send dragoons add dragoons this dragoons is going to trigger adding a megalo from our deck to our hand and now from here we need to make some board space now you could link away the toad but the toad is good for our ending board so what we're going to do is we're going to step up into another link with the coral anemone and the Neptibus. So we're going to step up into Mistaboy. Uh, and we're going to use this in a specific way. Because we need three monster zones open for what I want to do in this play. So we're going to activate Megalo, discarding Gund and Dragoons. Some of the Megalo. The Dragoons will trigger, the Gund will trigger, and the Megalo will trigger. So uh, Gund will revive the Teus. And then the uh, Megalo will add the Abyss card of your choice. Again, like I said, I like to play Mikazuchi. And in fact, Mikazuchi is the best one here, I think. I mean, the one that negates monster effect might also be just as good. But 
Mikazuchi negates Dark Ruler and Lightning Storm without me having to, like, try to justify anything different. So, I mean, you could play the Monster Negate one. It'll definitely play into the ending board just as well as Mikazuchi will. So, I'll leave that one up to you. But anyway, we are resolving a Dragoon Search right now. And this Dragoon Search is going to add Lapis Dragon. Because we need a tuner to step up into our Hauk Fibrax. So, Lapis Dragon got added to hand. We're going to Special Summon it. And now we are going to step up further into Crystron Needle Fiber, Hauk Fibrax. So, we're going to use Lapis Dragon and the Megalo into Crystron Hauk Fibrax. And we're going to use its effect to summon Fishborg Launcher from our deck because we are locked into waters again. And we want a card that can summon itself back because we want to be able to step up into more stuff, right? So what we're going to do from here is we're going to Synchro into 8, the new Adamatia uh, Synchro. I had, had to think about what this card was for a second. Adamatia Rise uh, Dragite, which is a generic level 8 Synchro. So we're going to Synchro into this, and what this card does is, during your main phase, you can activate the top 5 cards of your deck, and if you do, you can return cards of your opponent controls up to the, up to the, to the hand up to the number of Rock Monsters excavated. This isn't going to be the most relevant effect, however... If you're playing Nibiru, that is a rock monster you could excavate to potentially bounce cards with this. So, keep that in mind. Um, but the main meat of why we're playing this card is when your opponent activates a spell or trap card or effect while you have a water monster in your graveyard, quick effect, you can negate the activation and if you do destroy that card, you can only use each effect of this card once per turn. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but we have some water monsters in the graveyard. Just a few. So this card is a spell and trap, negate, and then negator for spell or trap effects as well so it doesn't have to negate just the uh, activation of them it can negate face-up effects of spells and traps as well so this is another negate for our ending board now what we're going to do is we're going to use the fishborg launchers effect which is while we have only waters in grave we can summon this and it gets banished when it leaves the field so we have only waters in our grave at this point point. and what we're going to do is we're going to link the mr boy in the uh, fishborg launcher away into mermail abyssalatia this gives us a Mermel name that we can equip the Mikazuchi or the Monster Negator. I think it's Abyss Scale of Sadus. That might be the trap one. Unsure. I've only ever played Mikazuchi because the Monster Negate one only gains 400 attack. Um, it just seems to be the most relevant one because, again, it negates Super Poly and it negates Dark Ruler no more. Kind of does a lot. Kind of a big deal. But anyway, so you can equip the Mikazuchi onto the Abyssalatia. So now you have a Spell Negate. A spell and trap negate, an anything negate. You've taken two cards away from your opponent with Mulan Glacia. You've done all this without being able to be Nibiru because of Toad being the fifth summon. And your Needle Fiber is going to do the same thing it did in the previous combo where it banishes itself during your opponent's main phase to summon Desert Locust, taking a card out of their hand in the process. So you take three cards out of their hand, two with Mulan Glace and one with Desert Locust. And then you have three points of interaction. So you effectively deal with all six of their cards in theory, in a vacuum. Because you deal with three cards through discarding, and then you have three points of interaction at minimum off the Mikazuchi, the Automatia, and the Totally Awesome. Now, the things that are good about this combo as well is that this combo plays very well into what the remaining cards of your hand could be. If you have a heavy infantry in your hand, or if you opened a Megalo, right? If you opened a Megalo or a Dragoons, then off of your Neptabyss, off of one of your Dragoons adds or whatever, you could add Atlantean Heavy Infantry to your hand because you don't need to add the other combo piece because you already drew it, meaning that your Abyssalatia also becomes another point of interaction because you could discard the Heavy Infantry, pop a face-up card, add Teus from your deck to your hand. Like, this is the most stable ending board that I'm comfortable ending on in the landscape of the format because it has a Dark Ruler out, has a Super Poly out, uh, and it has three, like, hard points of interaction on it. Spell Negate, Spell Negate, Spell Trap Negate, anything Negate. And then, this was a two-card combo. And your opponent is only playing with three cards anyway because they discarded three off of Moulin Glace and Desert Locust. So, this is the combo that I personally like the most going into the new format before we get Eternity Code. Obviously, when we get Eternity Code in May, all of these get changed a fair amount because of the Deep Sea Archetype allowing more variations of hand control to be a thing but this is still the sort of things that you might want to be considering ending on because it just is a lot of points of interaction and you can do more with the other three cards that are in your hand so it's pretty nice 
But anyway, that's what I wanted to show you for this video. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below as per usual. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any Mermel deck profile soon or not because I kind of want to buy the cards to do that because I haven't owned a Mermel deck in a long time and I think it's long overdue that I purchased one, but that's going to take some time considering that I can't go to any locals to buy these cards. <laughs> so there's that. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like I've already said, if you're new here, consider subscribing, like I've already said. And other than that, if you are interested in my live streams or my Discord server, links to those are in the description down below as well. But I'm going to leave you here. Thank you for watching. As usual, thanks for your time, as always, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.